thing the the thing about the work that Robin Gristle and Coyle uh, and to a less, slightly lesser extent Saki TV did is that we kind of act as like conduit, you know, a conduit is a, it's a sort of a, f a, um, a mouthpiece, a, f a way of, of um, passing information that we feel back to the audience. And it's, and it's, oftentimes it's quite spontaneous and it's, it's, it's very deeply felt. And in the time of Throwing Gristle, Genesis uh, was the kind of front person and the person who had to uh, expose his um, imagination and personality to the public the most deeply of the four of us. And and right now, John Balance is performing a similar role in Coil. And the work that we do um, is very demanding of the person because it's not like you just have to show up and sing songs. You know, the, the people who do that have to show up and reveal their the inner workings, their inner sort of soul, if you like. And revealing one's soul in public over and over is, you know, can kill you. You're right. It's, and and you say it not like Jim Morrison or Kurt Cobain, but it, I think those people are going through exactly the same thing. You know, and obviously, you know, people have personal issues at the same time as well, which makes the job harder and you know it's not for everyone sometimes the you know it would be easier if you were working in a shop or in a factory or in a gas station because you wouldn't have that danger of being exposed to the public view you know repeatedly it, that, that's why no, there are not many groups and not many bands that do it the way we do it because it's too demanding, you know. And uh, it's much easier for a singer just to show up and sing the lyrics. Who is doing it your way, Poet Rice? Um, Poet does sometimes, I guess. Yeah, yeah. All, all that. Most of of that kind of stable of uh, genre people do it to a greater or lesser extent. And different artists. I mean, in a way. You know, I think that Nina Simone probably does it more than Nick Cave. I don't know. That's just from my vision. I don't know, but there's another guy who did work with you, Mark Olmond. Mm -hmm. Still in contact? We, we speak to Mark every now and again. Yeah, we, we're hoping actually to do, do a new a new record that's uh, kind of an anniversary release of our Tainted Love because uh, that was the first record that, as far as we know, that actually provided money for for people with AIDS and uh, it seems like even though it was uh, nearly 20 years ago now there's a whole new generation of people who don't who haven't learnt the you know the lessons of the first generation of people that died because they're all gone and so lots of young people have unsafe sex and don't because they think either they don't know or they don't care or they think that you know the advance in medication and uh, and health is enough to protect them which is not true um so we're interested in in uh doing a new release possibly with or without mark i don't know that that, that uh, tries to bring this information to the public and also to and brings it um, back into the present into the public eye you you were doing several pop songs in your special way cover versions, not only Tainted Love, also Who By Fire, mm -hmm. and yesterday... Bang Bang, yeah. To me, this is a shared song. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, you know, it's, 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 there's, we have a strange approach to humour, um, in that, it, you know, first of all, we think they're great songs, and secondly, we think that it would surprise people and, and entertain people and amuse people to hear us doing them. And thirdly, you know, we think that we can actually do a version that has meaning in the same way that a coil song would have meaning. You know, because um, <coughs> all, all, generally all coil songs are, are kind of sort of have a deep, have an undercurrent. You know, we, we like to make music that appeals not 
simply to the front of your mind, but also to the back of your mind, so that you might have some appreciation or some different understanding of the song two weeks after you hear it, as well as what happened when you heard it for the first time. So uh, the songs that we choose to cover generally, we think, fit this requirement of having, you know, having a kind of funny and amusing reaction immediately. But also, when you think about it, you know, you have another. There's a double take. So obviously, with Tainted Love, you know, it, it was kind of weird to start with, but it also had a different meaning later, and maybe some even other meanings later on still. And likewise with Bang Bang. We hope we're actually we're gonna we're working right now on a cover version of um, Losing My Religion. <laughs> but that's a long story. So this uh, brings me to maybe the last question. Uh, do you believe in any kind of a god? Yes, very much so. Um, and she works what for me. She works for me. What's her daily wage? <laughs> Uh, I'm being stupid, but um, it's uh, it's difficult to talk about one's personal beliefs. But I definitely do believe that, that you know that um, there are things you know. It's not just random, and and death's not the end, you know. But I can't explain why I believe that or why. To me, you just know. Uh, You know, it's like it's like ritual. Everybody, um, you know, thinks that um, these things are outside ourselves, or that you know that uh, the church is something that is up there on the hill, and you have to do what they say. But it's not. You know, it's inside, and you have to just listen, and it becomes obvious. <coughs> Thank you. Yeah, all right, then. Uh, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. I think I have no business card with me, but I can write down everything.